Welcome to the Church Leaders Podcast, conversations with today's top ministry leaders to help you lead better every day. And now podcasting from scenic Colorado Springs, Colorado, here's your host, Jason Day. Hello, friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Church Leaders Podcast. I'm Jason Day, your host, and this week's guest is Craig Gross. Craig is best known as the founder of Triple X Church, but Craig has moved on to a new venture he's calling Christian Cannabis. As the legalization of marijuana use increases, we envision the subject becoming more and more relevant to church leaders who may be called upon to provide direction in this area. And so for this reason, we've attempted to provide a platform for this discussion here on the Church Leaders Podcast. However, please note that we're not endorsing the use of marijuana. At points, to be honest, my conversation with Craig became a bit tense. However, I hope you find the discussion helpful despite it being a little rough around the edges. We'd love to hear your comments, so feel free to post comments or to send us an email at podcast at churchleaders.com. And now I invite you to join me in my conversation with Craig Gross. Craig, I'd like to welcome you to the Church Leaders Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, now Craig, you are um, the idea of controversy is not something that's new to you. I mean, you you helped found um, a, a pretty powerful ministry and called Triple X Church, and uh, many of our listeners probably have heard of it. Some have not. And, and as you kind of uh, journeyed through that, I, I know that you had some pushback at times, and um, you had some some great things. The ministry has, has done some incredible things. Can you talk to us just a little bit about Triple X Church first, and just as kind of an introduction to you and your ministry? <clears throat> yeah, it was 2002, so that dates me. Maybe some of your uh, listeners uh, aren't as old, but if you can remember the dial-up days of the internet, um, for me, a 43-year-old male right now, uh, I didn't grow up around that stuff, so very hard to find. Um, when pornography hit the internet, I was working with young people, um, actually interning in a junior high ministry, and... I just remembered it was actually it was studying to be a pastor in a Christian apartment, you know, with four of my Christian roommates all studying to, to do ministry. And, and it was a day where it was like, oh, my gosh, have you, have you seen what's on the Internet now? And I just remember having that thought of, hey, I, there's no way you could survive if, if this was around when, when I was a kid. And the real difference, what we saw was. You know, I grew up in a generation you had to work really hard to find it. Mm-hmm. And now with the Internet, and this was, like I said, back in the early 2000s, it was like, hey, you have to work really hard to avoid it. Um, if you remember back in the day where they would take misspellings of websites and redirect them to porn sites. and Right, right. Um, you know, it wasn't as accessible, obviously, as it is today. But I just saw something happening where um, the idea was, hey, could you create a safe place online? to let people know they're not alone. They're not the only ones looking at this. There, there's a way out and didn't know a ton about it other than this was where the internet was going to go. And gosh, we better show up. And we decided to build a website that would, yeah, combine the CD and the sacred. You know, you put three X's in front of the word church. Um, we got a high bounce rate at the beginning, but we got found in some of the darkest places online where people were searching for, you know, XXX was the number one search for, it was the number one thing to do online back, back before we shopped and banked and did social media. And um, I think our launch is obviously what, you know, rate, raised some controversy, but the, the thought was, you know, as a pastor, I've been to youth pastor conventions and churches and and that whole circuit but the thought was hey people in the industry might have the same conflict as people outside the industry that um that they needed this message as well and so we took up a booth at the largest porn convention in the world which was in vegas um the same week as the electronic show and we just went with a simple message that jesus loves you and it was just a simple thought that you know that jesus loves you but um, people freaked out, you know, how could pastors be at a porn show and what could you, you know, what are we doing there and what's this message and what are we really trying to do with, for people? And, um, I think after 18 years of running that ministry, we've proven that, 
hey, we're here to stay. We're here to help people, regardless of your belief in God. Um, we are here to help you, whether you're struggling with porn, whether you're making porn, or whether you're starring in porn. Um, the same rules apply that Jesus loves you. And so I've championed that ministry for the last 18 years. We've been to, I think, 130 porn shows since that first one. Um, we've created a software called X3 Watch. We have small groups online. We've spoken at you know thousands of churches across the country now. And um, I think we were just a little early for the church in 02. So it took till about 05 when we had Craig Grishel, Bill Hybels, and Rob Bell all in the period of a year bring us to their church. So the way the church world, you know, your audience knows if one of those guys you might like, you might like all three of those guys. And so at the time, it, it gave us a range of different churches that followed those churches. And we were able to kind of drive this message through the local church for the next, you know, 18 years. Yeah, yeah, that, that's powerful. And, and yeah, I, I remember whenever um, you guys were at Life Church with Craig Rochelle, and that's whenever. Um, and I think that might have been actually the first that I, I came across you guys was was through that. And it was one of those things that um, in kind of what you were speaking to is, you know, we, we might have a, um, a bit of a trust factor there involved. And so we might trust, you know, um, a certain pastor. And whenever we see them, you know, connecting with a ministry that we're unfamiliar with, that often helps us say, oh, okay, you know, I, I imagine that they would have taken time to vet this ministry out or whatever it's in. And whether it's, uh, you know, Triple X Church or any other ministry, right? It's just kind of how how we as as humans process things. So um, can you talk to me a little bit about, like, what um, – I know you guys have, have done a lot over the last 18 years with Triple X Church, but uh, what what kind of stories have come out of, of people overcoming addiction, people coming out of porn, those types of things? Gosh, I mean, there's just so many. I mean, for years, obviously, we went to these porn shows, which is probably 10 percent of what we do. It's been on all you know the news outlets. So people think we're at a porn show every weekend, but <laughs> most of our weekends we're at churches. Right. But, you know, I think it took five years for us to find somebody inside the walls of a porn show that said, hey, I want to know Jesus. I want to leave this industry. Um and so I think oftentimes people, you know, we tend to keep score in our churches, you know, attendance, conversions, baptisms. Right. That's kind of, I think, our grades. And for years, you know, people told me, hey, you know, you're going there, but you're not seeing any fruit. And I think when you go into uncharted territories like that, that people haven't been, it takes time. It takes more than three minutes. Like some of these evangelists say, you got to shove Jesus down people's throat in three minutes or less. Um, and I just think... You know, it's taken three years, took four years, took five years. Yeah, yeah, that's that's wild. So so cool. We've we've heard that, uh, and we've seen, and probably a lot of people listening are, are f- somewhat familiar, I'd imagine, with the Triple X Church and and seeing how God has used that ministry. So you have you've kind of ventured into um, um, something new and something fresh. That honestly, when I first saw it, I was like, what? And uh, and so I want to kind of dig into that a little bit and and hear what, what's uh, what's going on with this idea of. Um, Christian cannabis and kind of what is your thought and your kind of your plan with Christian cannabis? What What is kind of its purpose from your perspective? Purpose or thought? So yeah, I, I am champion, obviously, a ministry of transparency and authenticity. And um, I felt like for years, um, not not for years, but due to some health problems and some things that I was dealing with, I had gotten a medical marijuana card and it was the type of thing where I didn't share that with many people. Um, I actually wrote a series of blogs about that in 2013 that people in our ministry and close to me just said, Hey, you shouldn't share this yet. Um, you know, you don't want to jeopardize one ministry to build something like, what are you doing here? And I just said, Hey, I, I think, you know, this is legal in California. And I think this has been demonized for the sake of being demonized, but, um, yeah, I just waited on it. And this past year, um, this past April, so six years and anyone who knows me, I mean, that's, that felt like 60 just to sit on something for so long and, and just go, I think it's time. I think it's time um, as I've traveled around to churches as well. Some of the largest churches in America, I've sat with, I think, some of the most influential church 
leaders in America. And I've just said, hey, I've got this thought on cannabis that I don't think it's all bad. Um, and I think there's a space for Christians to be in a conversation. And what do you think? Like, will I get murdered for this? Like, what? what like, I just was curious, you know, as I've gone around and people have asked me to speak at their churches. Um, hey, can I ask you a question about this? And most of the responses I got was, hey, I don't know enough about this. Like, I don't have any personal experience with this, but hey, you've done this before. Like, why don't you walk through this and make it easier so there's less fire when we walk through it? And and so I think for me, a, a lot of responses I thought I was going to get is like, oh, we're scared. We can't touch that. Like, there's no way we can talk about it. But it was more of, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't, I haven't done anything. And so I was just more fascinated. I think the church loses its influence when we avoid topics that the rest of the world is talking about. Um, I think we lose our influence when we use the Bible like Google and just throw a verse up to something. I think, you know, we lose our influence when we hide behind statements. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, you know, as a pastor of a church, if you're in a city today, one of the, or a state where this is legal and you don't, you know, you have a policy on alcohol, you have a policy for everything else but you've not addressed this issue with your staff. You've not talked openly about your, this with your congregation. Um, and you're just like, what are you waiting for? Like, so in California where I live, I go to pretty progressive church. You would hear about all in the tabloids for all the celebrities that go there. And um, I asked the pastor, Hey, what's your stance? I don't know. Like, Hey, what happens if somebody comes up to you after church and says, Hey pastor, there's a, medical marijuana shop up the road is that okay for me to go to and literally it was just like i don't know i don't know i don't know like and i just think we have to do better than that and for me i knew there's a lot of christians that i've met a lot of pastors that i've met that didn't have a problem with this but have never shared that publicly and my goal was i'm going to share my experience and I think other people with similar experiences, um, maybe this would make it easier for them to share. And I think we've got it all wrong when it comes to cannabis. Um, you know, I think largely that's because what the government's done. I think the propaganda there, but I think the church doesn't have, we don't have biblical answers and we definitely don't have sound answers on this. So we're just avoiding and I think that's a, a bad place to be in. And so we launched ChristianCannabis.com, which I said was a conversation. And I wanted to provide a platform similar to Triple X Church where people, we didn't want people to feel all alone on this issue. And um, my experience was a very positive one with marijuana. Like I've never abused it. I've never bought it illegally. And I didn't even smoke it. Like, for all those people that are worried about that. Um, my first ex experience with it was some mints, five milligram mints. And I think this is a very powerful plant that has been given to us. If we read the story in Genesis and um, we yeah, wanted to, wanted to talk about it. So started that on 420 on uh, over at Coachella, a big music festival in LA. We, mm -hmm. we launched the website. Okay, fascinating. So let me uh, let me talk through some things. Um, and let's start with uh, one of the things that you mentioned there at the tail end. You know, you said, "Hey, this is a plant that was given to us." You know, in Genesis, um, there are other things that are given to us, and not everything is is helpful. So, I, I think there are medicinal uses for cannabis that you know, proven scientifically, medically, there are positives there, but. A lot of the things in, in uh, I know you see the websites about conversations. I know you have that section of conversations, but also has products. And you talk about the idea of these products helping not only medicinally, but you also um, talk about how, you know, spiritually these have um, contributed in a positive way, the use of cannabis. So how do you kind of navigate that in regard to, you know, saying that, um, Cannabis is helping spiritually, I guess, is, is kind of one of the, one of the kind have of talking you, points. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Have you used cannabis at all? No. No, I have not. Yeah. So I think, you know, for Triple X Cheers for 18 years, I've had to defend why we go to a porn show. And I think Christians sit on the sidelines on a lot of conversations and we cheer or we fight or we come up against. But I do that. I mean, I watch a football game and you would act like I act like I know how to play football. I can't even throw a spiral. Um, so I think more and more Christians want to be in conversations that we know nothing about or have no experience firsthand with. Um, so I, I would say that was that's why I asked. So it's like, yeah, but I, I, I can't push- really I can't really I can't really defend something to you and share my experience. It's like, well, why do you go to a porn show? And it's like, well, I think Jesus would go to a porn show. And and I would say, I, and I would agree with that, Greg. I'd say, I think Jesus would go to a porn show. So I, I yeah. think you're trying and to so, no, apples to oranges so on that, right? No, and so I'm trying to say, if you, for me to explain my experience to you, I would just say, hey, this is, you can read hundreds of stories on our site and people have a lot of great experiences with cannabis. Um, it's hard to explain those experiences to people that have never tried it. And so I think the more we can share and say, yeah, this is a, this has medicinal benefits. This has, I think has, has helped me connect in a spiritual way. Um, and I don't feel like I have to defend that or even explain my experience in hopes that you would have one, but the amount of Christians that just go, well, I just, I've heard this, but I have no experience with it. It's like, well, if it's legal in your state and I'm not going to force it down your throat, but I'm also not going to try and say, talk to somebody that doesn't have any experience, you're not going to understand it. And if you talk to a lot of people that use cannabis, I think this is a, it can be a recreational drug. It can be a medicinal drug. It, it can have a range of benefits. Um, and for me, I would say slowing down my mind in a bit in order to connect in more of a heart space has become a, a very spiritual thing for me and connected me more with my heart and gotten me out of my head space. And I don't know why we're so afraid of it. Well, I think one is kind of a cop out to say, well, if you haven't tried it, then there's no reason for me to defend. Like we can't have a conversation over it. I mean, your claim is you want to have conversations around it. But then when we try to have a conversation, you say, well, have you tried it? Well, if you can't, I really can't explain it to you. I mean, if you apply that to everything in life and then anyone can make any claim about anything and say, well, you know, if you really haven't tried that, then, you know, you, uh, we really couldn't have a conversation around that. So I, I think that's kind of. I'm not trying to give you a cop up. I'm trying to say, as you told me, hey, I just ask. Because if I'm talking to somebody that's tried something, you get it. It's a lot less work to try and say, hey, well, here's my experience. I've written thousands of words on our website that explain my personal experience in great length. You can see on ChristianCannabis.com. Um, it's all there. And I'm not, I mean, I, I can defend it really well. Like I wrote, like I said, a lot of pages about it but to talk to somebody that has no experience with it like i mean i hope if you read the site like what do you think you think it's false the things that i'm saying there yeah well i i mean i i may definitely have questions um the medicinal stuff like i said and that's kind of how we started this conversation um there's definitely some medicinal stuff i i, I think the the place this is me personally speaking the place that it gets really fuzzy is whenever you start talking about you know that using cannabis gets you to um, a heightened spiritual awareness and those types of things. Um, because really then, you know, are there, there are other things that people could point to that says, oh yeah, well, when I do this, then I feel a uh, heightened spiritual awareness. And, and is that something that people could say, hey, they could say, I drop LSD and I feel, you know, closer. You know, I, I feel like I have a, a you know, a, a, a spiritual experience. I mean, I've had people tell me that. It's not like I've never been around I, cannabis. You know what I mean? I have grew up in the beach culture where there was tons of, of marijuana, right? I live in Colorado where, I mean, this is something as a pastor and minister. I mean, I've had people with medical marijuana cards. I've had many long, lengthy conversations in a pastoral setting around this. So it's one of those things where, you know, and, and – the fact that there's like product tied to this, like, you know, this is a conversation, but then we're going to turn around and guess what? We're going to sell it too. And, and the way that it's packaged around, 
purpose or praise or whatever and kind of tying in those things with with the cannabis itself it seems that you're really drawing a a a um, line between the the usage and a spiritual experience not just a medicinal yeah i don't ever came out and i think we've said it on our site too we've got to redefine these words medicinal and recreational i've never said i'm just for it medicinally i think i'm I, this um, for the legalization of this fully and it can have all those benefits and for us to sell it like i don't what's i'm just curious like the pushback of like if we say we landed on this side of the conversation why wouldn't we what's wrong with selling it? like what's wrong with saying hey i want to provide people with an experience so they're walking into a store and they're not buying, well, what's green crack or alien OG or some of these stoner type, you know, names that have been associated with this, but have some introductory products that we know could provide these types of benefits. Um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, guess... we, we make Christian movies. We have a Christian. I mean, I hate Christian products. Like I'm the last one that somebody would think would do a Christian product because they're always worse than, you know, like Christian music's not as good as, Secular music, Christian movies, we know don't stand a, a chance compared to. So for me to do a Christian product, is there such a thing as Christian weed? Like, nah, I think God gave us all of it. I'm, I want to take this message, though, to a church and Christians that are misled on this topic and they don't know what they don't know. And it's like, I think sometimes you just need to get permission to people to say, hey, you know what? Maybe this Maybe your pastor that has zero experience with this, that just Googled something or or tried to refer this like it's alcohol and uses a sober-minded passage, maybe there's more experience sitting in the pews that might be able to add to this conversation. And maybe pastors could ask some questions on this rather than thinking we have to provide all the answers yeah i, I get that i guess when when back to the the products and that sort of thing this is kind of what's driving this entire conversation but there's a lot of it seems a lot of dancing around it um, medicinally there is and, and i know you're saying you want to redefine some things but medicinally we've seen reports that medicinally and i know families personally that uh, medicinally use for like kids their children who have, have multiple seizures in a day and i've seen dramatic things. Again, living in Colorado, we've had lots of families that have actually literally moved here for medical care for their children. So this isn't just like something where I'm just popping on and like, whoa, what's up, dude? Um, and which is kind of how you, you kind of come across a little bit like, hey, if you haven't done it, you really, you know, your pastor just talking about you haven't really done it yourself, then, you know, there's really not a whole lot you can talk to. But your website, you kind of start off with this why behind it. And it's very it's very focused on medical, okay? It's, I mean, you're talking about how you've had different medical problems and, you know, couldn't get um, good diagnoses and all this stuff, and then you ventured into this. And so that's one piece of it. But then you, you make this move to the whole spiritual aspect of how this is um, increasing your spiritual awareness whenever by using cannabis. And then you have the products that you create um, around that, you know, pause, purpose, peace, uh, persevere, praise, you know, all of them are tied in to this kind of um, more of a, a, a lifestyle, more of kind of the, you know, the spiritual openness to the whole thing in using cannabis. And those are two entirely different things that I feel you really are trying to blur the line. And that's what I'm trying to, to get to the heart of medicinal versus recreational and recreational so much so that hey this is a way for me to be closer to god i think it could do all those things and if you read the, the site i'm not 2013 I, I got a medical marijuana card because of some medical conditions right and then it did nothing because at the time nothing that i could find um worked and so you fast forward to 2000. 17 and that's where like i said on the site it's very the site's not a we're not we're not talking about medically uh, on the site i mean if you if you keep reading 2017 i bought some mints and i talked about a spa day and connecting with the lord and starting to journal and starting to yeah have some times with him that it's not talking medicinally at all um 
I went there for medical reasons in 13. I discovered some help in 17 that I would say has changed my life um, in more ways than just medicinally. And I don't, I don't understand. I mean, if you're saying these products, yeah, the names, the ideas that we've come up with, the strains that we want to develop, like they're going to do these things. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not dancing around any of that. Like, I think this is, this is a great plan that has some great benefits and I'm not scared to talk about it. I mean, yeah. The grass is greener. Have you seen that documentary on Netflix? No, I haven't watched it. <laughs> it's great. I think when people start watching what's going to come out in the next few years, I think we're going to say, hey, not only have have we been misled, but we believe some of this stuff that's just not true. And I mean, that documentary, it's, it's amazing. It's Fab Five Freddy, uh, I think, produced it and talks a lot about the history of of marijuana and our myths about it and even the race card that that has been involved in this and why this was uh demonized um i think just and and i'm not saying because you have no experience like most pastors don't have i have a little bit more experience than your average pastor but i'm not an expert um i shared my experience and Mm -hmm. it's hard to share experiences when you do something that's not just controversial but when you start a conversation or you, whether it's pot or porn, it's hard to explain something to somebody that has no context or, you know, there's a lot of people not willing to even try something. So you're like, well, I can't convince you why going to a porn show for 18 years has been a good thing. Um, I can share with you experiences and stories. And just like this, you can go on our website and read story after story on christiancannabis.com of people that have benefited in similar ways to me with marijuana and you can go on other websites and read so many stories of abuse of people that are in prison because of this people that have you know misused this so i get all that but i'm saying i'd like to have a conversation to people that are are going hey i think there could be some positive benefits to this and if i tell you that i've lifted my hands in worship after using marijuana growing up in a Baptist home um, where dancing and raising your hands or any expression is wrong. But in my bathroom late at night when nobody's watching, I've been able to do that. I, I don't get how that would rub somebody the wrong way or somebody's gonna push up against that. Like that's me in my bathroom worshiping the Lord, not high out of my mind. And I said at some point, I'm going to be able to do that in public without weed. Like these are, it's awareness. It's things that this plant and other plant-based medicines that I believe are out there. What do you want to learn from them? And Christians, we live in so much fear, so much judgment and so much, you know, that I think at times many Christians can't even make a decision to try something because are we going to lose our salvation? Or are we going to like, don't I don't I don't think we have to live in such fear of of the Lord like that or judgment I mean Romans 14 if you read talks about you know some are going to eat meat some are going to be vegetarians but it's really not our place to to tell somebody what they can and can't eat and marijuana whether you want to eat that whether you want to take a pill whether you want to smoke that I just I just don't see it's our place as a church to just say you know, you can't do this. And we can't even back that up with with anything but, like, I, I mean, I've heard some of the most ridiculous claims that are trying to back that up scripturally that just, they don't stand any ground. Do you feel that there are other substances that people can ingest or smoke or drink or do whatever that you think helps them draw closer to God? Or do you think this is a unique thing to marijuana? Or because if if we can't really, you know, say one thing over the other, then how how I mean, are there any what arguments? Are you scared of? Are what, there like, any are you, no, what are you, Let me finish my question. Of? Are there any no, arguments about fear, anything? It's just, it's just what anything like 
No, is, are there any the police on? Like, what are you worried about? Like, what? Like, I tell you my experience. You have no interest in going. Oh well, tell me more about that. Like, you just want to play the devil's advocate of like, what are you scared of? Like, I'm, where I'm, did you grow up to the point of like you're going to be that worried that like? That, that, like Craig, if, you're missing the I've entire heard, point. I've, Listen, no, you're missing the point here of, of like, oh, man. there's something out there. I'm, I'm telling you, you just want to say, well. I want to know what the rub is with me saying I've drawn closer to the Lord and have gained more awareness because it, and you don't even, you want to jump to, well, what else can that happen from? Yes. I've heard people that have used a number of other things that have had similar experiences. I mean, if there's the church of uh, ayahuasca, uh, I'm, I'm now I, I know some people that have tried things like that. I, I read Michael Pollan's book, how to change your mind a Harvard professor who's 64 that tried every psychedelic known to man and wrote an amazing bestseller book. I've talked to Michael Pollan about the claims that people that have a spiritual connection to God have had in heightened trips using these substances and the ego dissolving even more and more. Like this stuff's real. Like this stuff can show you a lot. Um, I believe it. Like, I think we're going to see over the next three to five years, I mean, we saw in Oakland decriminalizing mushrooms. We saw um, that happen in Denver. Mm -hmm. Tim Ferriss just promoted a, a film called Trip of Compassion in Israel, which Israel is leading a lot of the charge on a lot of the discovery of cannabis, which is actually quite interesting when you think about Israel. Um, United States, we don't have as much studies on these things because we've made these things illegal. But man, if you want to watch Trip of Compassion and, and show people that are, are getting cured from PTSD and other things through MDMA and other 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 re, other things like that, there's a lot of stuff coming out in other countries um, that I think are are leaving us in the dust in the States because we've just said no to all these things. And I think a lot of this stuff with intent, um, with the right people around with a guide, um, even with cannabis, if somebody's going to try cannabis, I'd never recommend just trying it by yourself. Like talk to somebody who has some experience and uh, I'm just, it's just in your voice. You just seem so scared of like, well, yeah. Well, 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 everything else. Like, what? What else? Is, like, is this gonna is this gonna be a really a threat to your relationship with God if I tell you that hey, cannabis has helped my relationship with the Lord? No, it's not a fear well, at what all. What is it? It's what, and, what and is so, it? and I feel like that's another about. way to dance because um, it's, it's not. not a, I'm not freaking dancing with you. I'm saying, what are you worried about? You're talking to pastors on this podcast who have very little experience, and the more you hype this up or go, well, what else? Yeah, do you think you could get? Yeah, you could probably see an elf on a mushroom trip, but some I've met people that have met the Lord as well. So, I mean, you can't just put all this in a box and say, hey, this is what happens here. And if you have no experience and you never want to try it, fine. You might not you might not be ready for, for any of those things. But there's a day coming where I think this will be legal in all our states. And people are going to be faced with the decision of, well, what do I know about this? And if we go to our churches right now and we ask for answers, I think we're going to get very little help from our pastors that are leading the churches when they're afraid to talk about this. Yeah, so I, I would say a few things, Greg. One is it's not so much the fear. And, and whenever you say people are asking questions, again, as a pastor— um, I've had people ask questions. I've had people in my church, but I, th I think there's a difference between talking about it medicinally and talking about it as something that's going to elevate you spiritually, because you can look at all kinds of different substances, and there have been claims throughout the history of humankind in regard to using different things, getting in euphoric states, getting in spiritual states. I mean, that's a very real thing. It's not something that's just a fearful thing. It's something that's documented and has been documented throughout the history of humankind. So that's just one piece. So so I think one of the things, it's not a fear, it's a reality when you're talking about a responsibility within, within the church as a whole, when you're talking about a call into ministry, when you're talking about speaking with people, talking with people, discipling people, 
Um, I, th- I think that there's a whole bigger picture here. It's not just, well, you know, yeah, if you don't try it, then you really don't know. There are lots of questions. You can't really answer them. Yeah, there are all kinds of, because you could talk about all kinds of different psychedelics or a bazillion other things and say, yeah, man, I feel closer to God because I'm tripping on whatever. And so I don't think that's just a, a, a pat answer to say, hey, this is my experience. And, and if that's kind of just the, the perspective you have, um, that's your own perspective and that's fine. But I think some of the other things are uh, like one of you keep relating it back to, you know, Triple X Church and like going to a porn show or, you know, trying to reach uh, porn stars um, with, with the gospel and just extending the love of Christ to them and saying, you know, yeah, people are scared about that. Now people are, that's apples and oranges. I mean, they're not even re, like to even put those two things in the same sentence is, you know, Jesus would go and share his faith and share love and, and compassion to those in the porn industry or those who are addicted to porn, that sort of thing. You know, it's not even the same conversation as, as you know, Jesus going and smoking pot you know what I mean? And people are scared. Of I mean, those are two like totally, and, and you kind of put them in the same conversation, like, because they're two controversial things, maybe. And maybe there are people that well, might have well, fierce why are, tied why to are them, you saying, I mean, but they're not opinion. the same thing. I mean, it's like. Well, and, you're, and you jump to Jesus smoking pot. I mean, there's plenty of claims you can, you can, I don't know what to think about it, but I'm interested in the conversation when somebody tells me, you know, back into Moses and the fire and there was cannabis there or cannibal like I've heard claims that I've heard a lot of a lot of different things about cannabis and the existence of that all the way back into Bible times so you're jumping right to Jesus smoking weed like if this was created on day three and the plants were created for us um, like why do we want to think that this is just a new thing that this wasn't around Like, once again, if you watch The Grass is Greener, like they talk about, you know, the jazz music scene in 1920s. And then just just seeing that this has been around, you know, for quite some time. Like, this isn't a new conversation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think it was. And so, yeah, but to say that, like, Jesus, yeah, Jesus going to a porn show or Jesus being okay with cannabis, like, Jesus turned water into wine. Like, and now I grew up in a Baptist church that said. Well, that was non-alcoholic wine, and we can't <laughs> drink. Like that's just BS. Like, I but I I got I don't drink because it was for so just the same reason I don't dance or same reason I don't like you know express my hands in worship because I was told that hey this is not something we can do. I think those are lies. Those aren't truths. Um, those are religious rules that somebody put in force. I'm not see, reading anything about Jesus that says, hey, you can't take something from the earth and use this. And I don't think you need to scare more people on your podcast away from this conversation because I've said there's some spiritual benefits of this. Like you have no experience with that. So all you have is judgment and all you have is critique of what I'm and you're laughing at how I'm responding to you. Like you have no experience. So it's, it's, it's a little harder to talk to you, but <laughs> you have a lot of judgment man, and you have a lot of fear. And it's, I don't think that's going to get us anywhere as we move the church into a, hopefully a more accepting and innovative place that it has been for, for previous years, but we don't need more people on the sidelines, just critiquing what I'm doing. Um, like, is what I'm doing. Like, what are you doing? I'm not. Yeah, well, I've your podcast. Yeah, no, like, no, no. I, I'm just. I'm. That's not just a critique. This is just a conversation. If you have a, but you you tend to come across like you're dismissive of and if, of someone who's really kind of questioning it. And I'm I'm just. I have questions because I've counseled over 20 plus years in ministry, numerous people who've been addicted to all types of things, numerous people who have who have had issues with smoking marijuana, with taking, with becoming reliant upon marijuana. So it's not like to sit back and say, well, you really don't know because you haven't really experienced it. Yeah, I haven't. I don't have to be a drunk to understand what someone who is drunk can go through and in, in the impact they can have on their family when I've counseled and met and cried with and prayed with and have gone through those things as a friend with someone who's an alcoholic or any other thing under the sun. You know what I mean? So it's almost this, and it's not a fear. It's not a judgment thing. It's a, 
hey, this is a real thing. This is a real conversation, conversation that I've been involved in on different levels, as well as pretty much every one of my you know, ministry colleagues, especially here in, in Colorado, because this has been a thing we've, we've been dealing with and, and facing and co- having conversations around for a long time. So it's not just something that's, you know, that there's n- nothing a- around and it's just like, oh, taking shots at it. I mean, the questions I have are serious questions. I think they're important questions. I think we're looking at, at responsibly um, ministering, responsibly, you know, trying to honor God and be faithful in that. Then there, there are questions that we wrestle through, things that we talk through. We listen to people's experiences, but, you know what I mean? And that's, I mean, that's my opinion. Um, but it's yeah, not a, a, it's, I, it's not judgmentalism. Opinion. It's not fear. It's not. I mean, you, you like to label things really, really quickly. Whenever it's just a conversation that we might be on two different sides of the conversation. So that and that's and that's but all you right. Don't even know, but, but I'm saying you know because you've you've counseled people that have been addicted or misused drugs. Like you're talking to someone who just told you, I've never misused drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a different conversation. So I think what you have to do is take yourself out of your 20 years of counseling people and lumping marijuana into alcohol or heroin or these other drugs that it doesn't even compare to and say, I have no experience talking to somebody who's actually had favor with this, that has used this as an adult, not as a child, and it's not misused it. I'm very, I'm a, I have two kids sitting in the car with me. Like I'm a very responsible grown adult that has only done things in my life that have helped people. I've spent 20 years in, I mean, my whole life in ministry. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm not flippantly just, yeah, let's like, let's just go do this and, and just raise controversy. No, like I tell you, it's not just confident. It's this uh, we're on the right side of this conversation. Like I took a, a mint called relax a mint and I started journaling and I filled up five journals in the last two years and I hadn't written anything for the previous 40. Hey, that's a benefit of my spiritual life is living out in these journals that now I'm sharing on a podcast called Craig brain, like which people have told me, Hey, this is the best stuff that you've ever shared and learned. And, and then when I, mention oh well i use cannabis and people have oh well we got to throw out all that stuff now (laughs) and that's where i'm like says who like the proofs in like you talk to my family you talk to my wife you talk to the people around me like i would say i'm a better person because of this um oh well all you needed was jesus like like those kind of pat answers that we give in church like well, Jesus could have done that for you. All right. A little more of the, the Holy Spirit. Like, I'm telling you, like, that's connected me to the Spirit, which lives in me. And it shut my head down a little bit so I could I could be connected to my heart. Like, could I have got there on my own? Hey, you know what? In 43, 40 something years of my life, or I hadn't. So this helped me. I thought I would I would share that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think that's uh, that that might be you know some of the, the the concern is that we do we are a society that is has become more and more and more dependent on stuff substances to get us to a certain place and it, definitely there there are some you know there are some definite medical you know health issues that without a doubt we need assistance you know on you know I'm not I'm not saying it's one way or the other but you know and and just even like we say you know sometimes look at the prescription world lots of times we become dependent on on things that maybe maybe that's not the best best route you know and I, there's been a lot of you know introspection on the whole uh, pharmaceutical world around that so you know i'm just it's just wondering is this is this something that is just something else to become dependent upon and yes the outcome might be you know for for certain people that might be a really good outcome but is that I guess, is that the best route to that outcome? I mean, I think that's, that's a yeah. fair, fair thing to, you know, process. Through, yeah, right. So. Yeah. And let me just say this, cause yeah. I think for users that listeners that have no experience, even going into psychedelics um, and cannabis, I would say they're not these addictive drugs that, that are like heroin and crack. And, and so the people that I know that use cannabis and people that I know that have used 
psychedelics um, are not reliant on those. They're they're quite the opposite. They're like, hey, what do I want to learn? What 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 am I? And then, I mean, you can you can watch Michael Pollan's talk at the Google headquarters where he talked about a, a trip that he was on, and he goes, man, there's a lot of stuff then I I had to go work through and in real life and. I don't need to work with that for for a while. So the dependency on cannabis, um, man, I'm not dependent on that today for my spiritual practices. I, I can do that with or without that. Um, I think there's some things that I learned from using cannabis. Mm. And um, I think that's the difference where it's like, well, we're worried about dependency. This is, man, you use cannabis to check in. You use alcohol to check out. And I think that's... You, you, you find somebody, I mean, you can pull up any meme you want on, on Instagram about the difference of somebody using alcohol versus marijuana. And I think, yeah, it, it does come down to intent and, and the reasons why. But I, I think, yeah, I'm fully fine to give somebody permission, first of all, to say, if it's legal in your state, that, that this is not going to send you, this plant's not going to send you to hell. And uh, this could actually have the opposite and could have some benefits to to help you in ways that, that maybe you never would have imagined. And we're going to share more about that and educate people on ChristianCannabis.com. And that's really our hope there. Good stuff. And, uh, and like I said, I, I hope the conversation continues because it's a necessary conversation. So, well, Craig, thanks, man. We went a lot longer than I anticipated, but uh, uh, not surprising when you think about the, uh, you know, the subject, right? So, because like you said, I mean, this is, this is a lot of new territory. And uh, so I just want to appreciate your, your willingness to have the conversation and to kind of navigate and, and uh, we just appreciate you taking the time to, to be with us. Right on. Thanks again for having me on. All right. Thanks, brother. God bless you. All right, thanks. I appreciate you taking the time to be with us on this week's episode. Every week as we are putting the episodes together, we're thinking of you, our pastors and ministry leaders, and striving to provide insightful and inspiring interviews as you seek to grow as a kingdom leader. So we hope you're finding value from the Church Leaders Podcast. And if so, we'd certainly appreciate you taking a few moments to head over to iTunes and leave us a review. Your positive reviews and ratings help other church leaders more easily find our podcasts so they too can benefit from these interviews. Again, we thank you in advance. And if you have any comments, any questions, suggestions, or ideas for guests, I would love to hear from you. You can send me an email to podcast at churchleaders.com or you can connect with me on Twitter. Finally, you can find this podcast as well as other great faith-based podcasts on the Faith Play app. It's available for both Apple and Android, and so we encourage you to check that out as well. So until next time, this is Jason Day encouraging you to love well and lead well. You've been listening to the Church Leaders Podcast. For articles, videos, and free resources that will help you lead better every day, visit our website at churchleaders.com.